Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 2020 Louisville Visual Art Honors Luncheon, a celebration of individuals who've made a significant impact in our visual art community. And as you know, this is also a fundraiser for LVA's Fine Art Classes for Children, which you'll be hearing some more about. I'm your MC, Angie Fenton, as the host of WHS 11's Great Day Live and editor-in-chief of Extol Magazine. Highlighting the arts is part of my professional mission. As the mother of a four-year-old daughter, though, it's a personal one, too. So I'm honored to be here and also have the opportunity to now acknowledge the following dignitaries who are with us today. And as I say your name, if you wouldn't mind standing, please welcome Senator Gerald Neal. <laughs> District Court Judge Ann Haney. Kentucky Personnel Cabinet Secretary, Jarena Weathers. Kentucky Personnel Cabinet Deputy Secretary, Lindy Casebeer. <laughs> Metro Council Member, Bill Hollander. School Board Chair, Diane Porter. <laughs> Director of the Kentucky Arts Council, Chris Cathers. <laughs> Former Director of the Kentucky Arts Council, Lori Meadows. <laughs> did I miss any other dignitaries? If I did, my apologies. Well, he, we save him for last. I could never miss him. And now, please welcome a fervent champion of the arts in our community. I promise you, he's right here. Big letters, big and bold. So again, please welcome a fervent champion of the arts, Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher. He's unforgettable for a variety of reasons, so good to see you. Good to see you. Well, good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? I always think this is the most interesting gathering for any kind of lunch like this because of the uh, dynamic nature of the arts. So if you're here, you're officially an interesting person in the city of Louisville. So thanks, everybody, for being here. And I'm really honored to help celebrate the people who have made the biggest impact on the arts in our community. It's a, it's a wonderful gathering every year, and also to celebrate Louisville Visual Art and its commitment to embracing the entire arts ecosystem here in our great city. Because we all know uh, the inspiration that we get from arts, the challenge uh, that it can give us. We're, we're using the arts in our Lean Into Louisville initiative, which is uh, attacking all forms of discrimination and racism, whatever it might be. And arts can bring people together to kind of tone it down a little bit so we can come together on what an issue is and discuss that. So whether it's that or challenge or inspiring the little kid that sees that first work of art and just says, I want to do that. I don't know what it is, but it's beautiful. And I want to learn how to do that. And then there's the money side of that. As the mayor, I got to be worried about money. I wish I didn't have to be, but we got to balance the budget here in our city. So when you think about the economic impact of our nonprofit arts and culture industry, we generate close to a half a billion dollars in annual economic activity in our, in our city. And that, that uh, supports almost 17,000 of our friends in this industry. And it is a huge draw for us as our hospitality reputation, our tourism industry is taking off with bourbonism. Uh, arts are a critical, critical role when these tourists come to our city and they want to see the arts come alive in all forms in our city. And more importantly, we know that arts really creates even more intentional moments of connection for us and watching our community coming around, coming together around a piece of art is an unforgettable experience. And right in the middle of all of that is LVA. I really love the most recent initiative that LVA put together this past fall 
with the mural arts program. As we all know, uh, over the last several years, we've really been focusing on equity in the arts and making sure that our entire city, from east to west, feels like they have a voice in our arts program. And it hasn't always been uh, so pronounced that way. LVA has always been pronounced that way. And when you see the mural arts program in the Smoketown Neighborhood Association, we added 15 new murals through Smoketown last fall, celebrating the stories of historic places, people that have made a big impact on our city. Elmer Lucille is with us today. She's been a big part of that whole story. I want to thank you, Elmer Lucille. Go get him. So please cruise through Smoketown if you haven't seen these murals. They truly are amazing, and thanks LVA for doing that. LVA's Open Doors program has always been super important to our city as well to engage young people in our community. They do that in a fantastic way, and they've been a reliable partner and resource here for our city really for 100 years, which is amazing to me because I think of LVA as one of the most innovative uh, partners that the city has, and when you put together that word innovative, with a hundred year history. I mean, it can show you how you can be doing something for a long period of time and always pushing people together on pragmatic and progressive ideas. That work has been especially strong through their signature program, which is the Children's Fine Art Classes, also known as CFAC. And today's event benefits CFAC, which is now in its 95th year, ensuring accessible arts education for young people all across Louisville. And what's remarkable about CFAC and about art in general is that how it prepares our kids for a, a, a myriad of academic paths and life choices. Not necessarily just art, which of course is wonderful, but it teaches so many strong skills that are necessary for our students to have. I want to thank LVA also for the very progressive move they made, you all made, in moving to Portland several years ago. Our city is developing in really interesting ways. And it's important that people in all parts of our city uh, see the beauty of art, that there's bold investments made where people say, I believe in Portland, I believe in Russell, I believe in the California neighborhood. And what LVA did with that placemaking decision was really outstanding. So I want to just say thank you for doing that and the leadership of LVA to do that. Very similar, I want to throw a little love. Yeah, let's hear it for Portland, that decision. And that was, it's not identical, but it can also uh, be traced to what Billy Hertz and Chuck Swanson did years ago along East Market Street, where East Market Street was, you know, kind of a drive-through place and you just wanted to get through it, but we had bold investors, pioneers like Billy, Chuck and others that say, I'm going to make this home and I'm going to revitalize this area of downtown. And when you placed Billy where you were on your first investment, Tom, when you were at East Market compared to where it is today, is one of the coolest neighborhoods in the entire country. That would have not have happened without the work of leaders like these guys. So let's hear it for Billy Hertz here today. <laughs> Last, I want to just say a special thank you to Lindy K. Spear. Uh, Lindy has been incredible in his leadership of LVA. He's been an incredible citizen of our Commonwealth as an elected official, as an advocate in so many different things. Uh, so, Lindy, I just want to say thank you as you transition again to a position of helping all the people of the Commonwealth for what you've done for us here in our city in LVA. Lindy K. Spear, thank you. So again, I want to just say thanks again to everybody for your all's dedication to the arts and our stars here, Billy and Nana, Shay and Liz. We've got an all-star uh, cast that we're honoring here this afternoon. And through their work and devotion to the arts, they've created an incredible, not just legacy for us, but I think they've built high expectations for what we're going to be doing in the future as well. So congratulations, guys, and welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Fisher. Now, before I announce our next speaker, you have a delicious salad sitting in front of you, and we are going to jump right into honoring and talking about some incredible folks. So as we do that, please do not hesitate to dig in. It is lunchtime after all. 
So now, please welcome someone who we are so lucky to have in our community, Marty Keene, president of LVA's board. Thank you, Angie. Well, Greg Fisher isn't the only one that's in the hot seat. Someone else has to be in that too. I'm Marty Keene, president of the board of Louisville Visual Art and honored to be so. So whether it's your first, second, or third time here to be at honors, thank you for coming, for supporting Louisville Visual Art, for supporting the effort that LVA does in the community. So I really appreciate, we all appreciate it. And it's a wonderful day to give thanks and the first group of people I'd like to give thanks to are our staff at Louisville Visual Art. So would you please stand, the staff. We have Keith Waits over here, Amy, Amy Chase, Grant Johnson, Kayla Bischoff, Annette Cable somewhere, and over here, and we have Glenn Barber and Katie Delahanty. So thank you very much. It's a well-oiled machine, let's put it that way. We also have several of our academy or and outreach and CFAC uh, teachers here that we'd like to acknowledge. So would you please stand, those of you that are our teachers in the field working with our students. We have two event chairs who have helped put this together. Beverly Cody, would you please stand? Stuart Hertz, would you please stand? The LVA board is a mighty board. And would you please stand and also if you are a member of the LVA uh, advisory, would you please stand board members? and Academy. Thank you. Our advisory. We couldn't do this without the money that it takes to put on an event like this, and it is a fundraiser. So we have to thank our sponsors, uh, Baird Financial Services, Kentucky Select, Poe Company, Glenview Trust, Republic Bank, LG&EKU, Sterling Thompson, and Commonwealth Bank. Thank you very much for stepping up. We really appreciate it. Well, this is unscripted, but Lindy K. Spear, could you come up here, please? It was Lindy's inspirational idea three years ago to start an honors luncheon to say thank you for the people that have been in the arts support the arts and they needed to be recognized so Lindy started this honors luncheon and it has been a sellout for the past three years so Lindy I just want you to know we have a gift from the board I know it's not black and white, it's, it's some color. So, Lindy, thank you very much. And so, Lindy and I have worked together for four years, and he's been my thought partner. And it's wonderful to have a thought partner. So, I just want to say it was a privilege, and I know you've gone on to a wonderful change in your career. But you will not be forgotten, and look at your legacy. This is amazing, and you know I'm I am adding some color to my life. So you know uh, it, it actually matches my tie. So who knew? But um, the last four years are just beyond remarkable, and the privilege to work with 
an amazingly talented staff that just goes beyond every day what is even what you could even consider and a board that is that has grown and I'm that was one of the things that was so hard to say yes to this new opportunity was we've been working to, to build this board and the folks on that board are just so amazing so it was hard to leave them but you know it also on the other hand and it's been a, and it's been a process to get the staff to this where they are uh, as far as who is on the staff at this time so I feel I think I was I was very torn but at the end of the day I was like this it could not be in a better position with the with the leadership of the staff who can honestly probably run themselves and and the board that is in such a great position as well and so supportive and uh, this organization uh, is so undervalued in this community and folks don't realize the impact that LVA has had through the years. As the mayor said, over a hundred years as an organization and, and almost a hundred years in education. And you're gonna see throughout today the impact that LVA has had through these artists and through, through educational efforts. So thank you so much for being here and board, thank you for this. It means more than you will know. Thank you so much. I'd like to ask Aaron Reed to go ahead and come up to the stage. Aaron will present to Liz Richter, of course, LVA's emerging artist. But first, Aaron was a teacher and staff member with LVA for about five years. Aaron grew up near Chicago and graduated with a BA in Latin American Studies from Kenyon College in Ohio. In late 2013, she moved to Louisville from San Francisco where she'd lived for 14 years and where she received a BFA with high distinction in painting and drawing from the California College of the Arts. As LVA's outreach programs manager, she continues her work as a community-based art ed educator working with youth in a variety of visual art programs. Erin's latest personal artwork relies upon found photography, which she reinterprets and then transforms through stitching and embroidery. This unique blend of traditional craft and contemporary media investigates ideas of memory and contemporary culture and seeks to develop a conversation between the ethereal world of technology and the hand-sewn physicality of craft. Her rigorous personal studio practices help guide her throughout her journey as a much treasured arts educator. Erin Reed. Um, well, thank you, Angie, for all that. I wasn't expecting um, anything about me because this is not about me today. Um, but I am beyond thrilled to be here um, and to have been invited to introduce. Liz Richter, um, the recipient of LVA's Emerging Artist Award. Um, Liz is, a, is an artist that I respect and admire so deeply. Um, and having worked with her over the last couple of years on, on a few different projects, um, it's been really incredible to, to see her growth and development. Um, so I have these notes up here, and I wrote this whole thing, but I'm kind of more comfortable off the cuff. So um, if you'll bear with me. Um, so in, in kind of preparing my, my uh, remarks today, I was thinking about this notion of an emerging artist, right? And what does that mean? And that is a phrase that we use a lot in the art world that, you know, kind of talking about people and, you know, artists on their journeys and so forth. Um, and we kind of strike this distinction somehow between like an emerging artist and an established artist or a mid-career artist. So, you know, what, what do these terms mean exactly? Um, and I think that the term can be uh, maybe overly weighted in some ways. Um, and so I was kind of thinking about this and thinking about it with respect to, to Liz and what does it mean to be an emerging artist? And I think that at its core and the way that I would define it is that it is um, an emerging artist is someone who is in a, an, an intensive process of growth and development um, and kind of wanting to define an emerging artist as, as a person who is who is who is deeply in that journey um, and I think that Liz really embodies that concept um, so definitively um, and in the last few years having worked with her and you know watching her grow and develop um, I've seen her stretch 
her, um, stretch her skills, stretch the, the scope and the scale of her work. I mean, obviously, you know, um, embarking on a, um, on, a, on a career as a muralist is a, um, is a huge undertaking. Um, so I just want to share kind of one quick anecdote, and this was actually just something that I was kind of thinking about as I um, was driving over here this morning. Um, so I had the opportunity when I was on staff with LVA um, to kind of be the project manager for the series of murals that were commissioned by Google Fiber, um, RIP. Um, and uh, Liz was, was one of the artists that was selected, and originally her, um, the site that was, that was selected or chosen for her, for her work was going to be um, in the Highlands, and you know, we had this wall all kind of planned out and everything, and then all of a sudden, the, the commissioning client, Google Fiber, came and they said, no, 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 we don't want it to be there, we've decided we want this other site. Right, so it's um, ended up we're over on um, on a wall on the side of Red Tree um, on East Market in Nulu, um, a wall which was not to the you know the same scope and the, you know was not at all what Liz had originally planned for. Right, um, turned out it was bigger, it was taller, you know, it was a it was a bigger project than um, than she had originally planned and. Um, working alongside her to, you know, help troubleshoot some of the challenges that that presented, um, including, you know, all of a sudden needing to rent a scissor lift and have the sidewalk is all wobbly and how are we going to shim it to make sure she doesn't fall over and, you know, all of this. Um, but, uh, but this is, you know, all just to say that, um, that it's been really incredible to watch Liz um, grow and, 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 and take on these bigger challenges and, um, and I'm just is so proud of you and the work that you've done and, um, and the mark that you've left on this city. And, and we're just, we're so excited to see what comes next for you. Um, you're a rock star. We love you. And um, can't wait to see what's next. So. <laughs> Please welcome Liz to the stage. I just want to say a brief thank you to Louisville Visual Art, the board and staff for hosting the event, for all of you for supporting our education in our city. I've seen firsthand the great benefits that LVA's programming has had on students and on the community, and I'm just so thankful that this organization is alive and thriving here in Louisville. I'm also grateful for the support LVA has given me as an artist over the past seven years, and especially in the last four years, as I've grown into public art. LVA believed me when I told them what I could do. And they've provided me opportunities to grow as an artist, as a muralist, and an educator. Thank you especially to all of the wonderful, supportive, creative women here in the city. Um, in the Louisville art community, some within LVA and some in other various roles. Um, there's a lot of women here in Louisville who have particularly championed, vouched, and rooted for me. And I would not be here if it was not for them. Thank you to my fellow artists and muralists who have shared their knowledge, to my friends and family, especially my husband, Corey, who's encouraged me to pursue my passion. And I'm just grateful to have found my path to share love and light with the world. I can't wait to see what's next. Thank you all. James Grubello will present to Shea, but before he does, James received the LVA Art Education Educator of the Year Award in 2019 and has a long association with LVA, primarily as an exhibiting artist in our various galleries. His wife Kay also worked for LVA for some time. James joined the Department of Fine Arts in the Hyatt Art Institute after completing his MFA at Indiana University Bloomington. A native Detroiter, James earned his BFA from Wayne State University in both printmaking and in drawing. James has maintained an incredibly active exhibition record and is represented in the permanent collections of the Speed Art Museum, the Indianapolis Museum of Art, and numerous corporate collections. He is so valued as a member of the LVA family. Please welcome James Grubolo.
it's a double pleasure to be able to introduce and, and give the LVA's Educator of the Year Award to one of my colleagues, Shay Rhodes. Those of us who teach at the university level have to wear many hats and do multiple jobs, not just teaching. So there are many hybrid hyphenated terms and titles that have been developed to describe what we do. First and foremost is the title artist slash teacher. To be a university professor in fine arts means you must first be a professional in your field. That means you are actively conducting original research. Original research is a funny word to use in the arts, but it means that you are making art at the highest professional standards. It is also expected that you hold the highest degree possible. Shay Rhodes received his undergraduate degree from Center College while working with esteemed teacher and glass artist Stephen Powell. He then went on to Tyler School of Art at Temple University to earn a Master's of Fine Arts, the highest degree in studio art. As an artist, Shea has built an extraordinary professional resume with one person and group exhibitions nationally and internationally, shows at museums in Alabama and Michigan, and a residency at the Tacoma Museum of Art, and significant commissioned installations, including one here in Louisville at Norton Healthcare. Shea more than fulfills the artist in the first part of that title, but what we are here to recognize today is the teacher half. After graduate school, Shea was hired to take over the, glass, the studio glass program at Southern Illinois University. While continuing to build and expand the glass program at SIU, his influence be, be extended beyond the Carbondale campus as he became involved in the Glass Art Society, moving up to become a member of its board of directors. The Glass Art Society is an international organization whose mission it is to advance education and promote appreciation of the glass arts. A big part of the Glass Art Society annual conferences are demonstrations by the world's leading artists. Shea has been invited to demonstrate at three different conferences. He has also taught and demonstrated at the Corning Museum of Art, the Pilchuck School in Washington, Urban Glass in Brooklyn, and in Venice, the home of glass. Since 2005, those of us in Louisville have been, able to, have been fortunate to able to witness Shea's work in teaching firsthand, as that is when he joined the faculty at the University of Louisville and was charged with building a glass program in the Hyde Art Institute. Previously, we, I say we because I was fortunate to be chair of the department at the time, had started offering glass classes but with the support and encouragement of the community, we were urged to move forward and develop glass as a full program area. The biggest obstacle to this was having our own glass studio. In September of 2007, we were able to open an incredible glass studio at the Crestman Center for Visual Arts in downtown. It was the University of Louisville's first non-medical downtown teaching facility. It's important to note that it was in the arts. In his time since joining the faculty here, Shea has built one of the top glass programs in the country, both in terms of facilities and aesthetic. Shea's teaching philosophy em emphasizes the developments of skill and technique, but just as important is his mentoring and guiding of each student as they are encouraged to develop their own personal vision and expression. The best way I can convey and, and to you the, the evolution and growth of a student in Shea's class is a personal one. My son was an art major at U of L when Shea joined the faculty. I would have bet money that when he started he was going to be a photographer or a printmaking major. He was headed in that direction when in his junior year he took a class with Shea. After that he was, a, he was hooked. Shea's enthusiasm and commitment to glass is contagious. A hot shop is set up a little different than most other studio art classes. Our studio has two workbenches, two furnaces, two glory holes to keep the glass hot while you are working. So students work in pairs of two with one student working the glass and the other blowing and assisting. 
Because this is not, because of this, not everyone gets an opportunity to work on that day's techniques or their own work during class. Students in pairs have to sign up for what are known as blow slots that meet outside of class times. So we are basically running the hot shop 15 hours a day, four days a week. And Shay is there for many of those hours. At the start of one semester, my wife Kay called our son to see how the semester was starting. He told her excitedly that he had gotten a great blow slot that semester. It was 10 to 1. Kay, not thinking, said, when are you going to eat lunch? And he said, no, you don't understand. It's 10 to 1 o'clock in the morning. I don't have to stop because there's nobody after me. I can work all night if I want. And that's what Shay's students come away with, that enthusiasm and, and, and for their art and their art making. It is my pleasure to award the 2020 LBA Honors Educator of the Year to Shay Rhodes. I've got a Brooke White in my collection now. Uh, I listened to um, a certain politician's response to the uh, impeachment uh, trial this morning. So that inspired uh, modesty and brevity. So I won't, I won't take a lot of your, of your time today. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> thank you, Jim, for expanding my resume uh, and those, those flattering words. Um, it feels like an undeserved honor to uh, be up here accepting this award, uh, especially on the heels of, of Jim Grabola, who has been an inspiration to me. But um, I can only hope that when I'm um, at the stage where he is in his career that I've accomplished even a fraction of the things that, that he has done as an artist and an educator. So, so thanks for that, but uh, I hope to, to live up to the honor at some point. Um, I've made a lot of awards uh, in my career. Uh, I've received a few, and I sometimes uh, struggle to, to understand how awards are, are meaningful. Um, and I want to thank LVA because this one in particular um, has felt very meaningful for me. Um, it's an honor to receive this from uh, the organization, obviously, but uh, also your, your PR person, I think, needs a raise because so many people who are not even remotely related to the arts community in Louisville have congratulated me on this award. And I really... Uh, have come to understand in just the last few weeks that it's the acknowledgement, just the acknowledgement of your existence, of your efforts, and the things that you've done that, that really make the award meaningful, at least for me. Um, it has also caused me to think a lot about mentorship. Um, Jim was a mentor to me. He invited me and convinced me to move to Louisville, so thank you for that again. Um, but when I first got here, it was LVA and people like Kay Grubola, uh, who was deeply involved at the time, who really welcomed me to the arts community in Louisville, mapped it out for me, and really helped me to understand what it meant to be an artist here locally in Louisville. Um, and then over the years, I've watched uh, the, the, the children's fine arts classes. And, you know, they really do a double duty, I think. And I think this is a great lunch in this event to support that programming because not only do they, they foster mentorship with those young students, and it's such an important time for that right now, but also it's given an opportunity to a lot of young educators to have a chance to get their feet wet and start working with our young people and introduce them to the field that is, that is the arts. So that's really all that I have to say. Thank you so much. Um, this is a great, a great cause, a great event, and I hope it continues for another 100 or 200 years. So thanks. As host of Great Day Live, I get the opportunity, I always feel like it's a, a privilege to interview and highlight people and businesses and organizations that are doing amazing things in our community. And aside from Kenny Rogers, who I just melted into tears, I usually keep it together. 
But this next speaker, I'd had a little, what I'm just going to use what the kids say, fangirl moment when she was on Great Day Live. And that is the one and only Wilma Bethel. And that is because I know, and many of you know, how important she is to the kids in our community. And then she is going to introduce our next speaker, who also was on Great Day Live recently and knocked our socks off, but just you wait. Wilma J. Bethel has been with LVA's Children's Fine Art Classes, or CFAC, for more than 45 years. Teaching absolutely. <laughs> teaching at a number of our middle, and, or teaching a number of locations for middle and high school students. She has an amazing ability to draw out and encourage her students' artistic talents. In her own words, a class like CFAC is so important because so many students are not exposed to the discipline and the rigor of the studio environment. Yes, I teach the fundamentals of art, but what my students learn is how to think for themselves and to be creative problem solvers. And like Shay acknowledged, now is a time where we need that more than ever. Wilma graduated with a BFA from Moorhead State University in 1971, then went on to receive her MAT in art education at the University of Louisville in 1975. She taught with JCPS from 1971 until 2012, as well as at Bellarmine University from 2008 to 2012. Again, she has taught with the LVA Children's Fine Arts Program since 1973. Please give her a warm welcome. I'm here to introduce Destiny Love Jackson. Destiny Love Jackson is a member of my Drawing to Academy class, which is one of the high school classes that is a component of the children's fine art classes. She is extremely intelligent, talented, creative, and a great problem solver. I'm, I'm a, I am very privileged to have her in my class. Her first class with LVA was a summer camp that she took in her seventh grade year. In fact, the camp was Destiny's first formal introduction to art. She is now a freshman at DuPont Manual High School and has again started taking classes from CFAC. Destiny Love did not have the guidance of a trained art instructor in her elementary and middle school because many public and private schools do not have art education in their curriculum. It is a pleasure to introduce Destiny Love as one of our brightest shining stars. Destiny. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Wilma, for that heartfelt introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. First and foremost, I would like to thank the Louisville Visual Arts staff for allowing me to speak at this luncheon. It is an honor. Congratulations to all the award recipients this year and to all those that have received awards in the past and have made in a difference in the Louisville Visual Art community. Thank you for your contributions. My name is Destiny Love Jackson and I've been a student at Louisville Visual Art for about four years. I did not have a formal education in art until I became a student at Louisville Visual Art. Louisville Visual Art has been a tremendous opportunity for me to learn and further the development of my skills as an artist. I have always had a passion for art. However, the teachers and students at Louisville Visual Art drive that passion because not only do I get to learn from my teachers, but from my peers as well. It helps to be in an environment like Louisville Visual Art, where the common ground is art. 
I began this journey enrolled in a summer class with Miss Annette Cable, who saw something in my artistic abilities and recommended this wonderful program. Her interest in my abilities genuinely touched me. This gesture alone inspired me and gave me the desire to create more art and gave me the confidence to really believe in my abilities. I also had the utmost pleasure of meeting Mr. Kelvin Goodner, who has unfortunately passed away, as an art mentor at Louisville Visual Art. His strong passion for teaching art and seeing the value in everyone and everything inspires me to this day. He taught me through line and shape how people are different and to always have respect for other people's art and accept those differences. You see, art isn't something on a piece of paper. Art is something that defines not only a group, but an entire generation, maybe. Teachers like this, for mentors like this, to show such a strong interest in what is what young artists need. I have met a lot of people through Louisville Visual Art. Met my best friend, Hannah. We've been through a lot together, transitioning from middle to high school and helping each other with art. Without this program, I would have not met her. Louisville Visual Art has helped me make great strides in my art career. After high school, I plan to go to Cal Arts to further my education. Also, my plan is to give my time and talent back to Louisville Visual Art, hopefully to impact young artists as so many teachers, excuse me, teachers, mentors, and students have impacted me. Louisville Visual Art encourages and spreads the works of art through teachers and mentors who are very well educated. They have a platform that speaks and teaches the language of arts. It is an opportunity and an experience that is vital to every developing artist. I believe that a world without art would be a colorless world, and that world is no man, no woman, nor child should have to live in. Thank you for your time. You're supposed to stand up here with me, okay? No, <laughs> sorry. It's all right. No, no. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> the children's fine art classes have been in existence for 95 years. That's a long time. In 2019, CFAC impacted 900 plus children from grades four through eighth. We are active in five different counties with 37 different sites. The children's fine art classes have been a staple in the community for talented and gifted children when other organizations have not. It is extremely important that our talented and gifted students continue to have the opportunity to express themselves freely. Destiny is a prime example of this. She will, she, sorry, her willpower to create without formal training is a miracle. The art experience is important to the development of creativity, imagination, and problem-solving skills, tools necessary for every job in our children's future. Can you imagine how many Ed Hamiltons or Destiny Love Jacksons we could lose if the children's fine art classes did not exist? Ed took the classes when he was younger. There are envelopes on your tables, and there is a captain at each table. We are asking for contributions to continue our mission of educating talented and gifted students for another 95 years. Please place your contribution into the envelopes and give them to the captains at your tables. Are there any questions about that? We want you to dig deep, <laughs> dig deep. Thank you. Before Nana receives her award, I'm, Lindy will be presenting. Lindy K. Spear, a Louisville native, joined Louisville Visual Art after many years as an arts educator and administrator an arts advocate and legislator serving two governors in senior roles with the Kentucky Tourism Arts and Heritage Cabinet.
For 18 years, Lindy represented Louisville in the Kentucky General Assembly, where he chaired the Senate Education Committee. A longtime public school educator, Lindy began his teaching career at Valley High School, serving there for 14 years, and served as district music supervisor for JCPS at Gaines Academy for four. Lindy K. Spear was executive director of LVA for four years and recently moved on to a post in the Bashir cabinet and based on his reception before, much loved by many of you. Please welcome Lindy. So with all in the news of what's wrong with our public schools and our community, I think you just saw a classic example of what's right. And let's give Destiny a hand. And one of the reasons that Destiny and our students in CFAC are where they are is because of teachers like Wilma who gave 40 plus years as a public school teacher and also 40 plus years with us at LVA and she's still with us and, and I hope she'll stay for a few more. And I don't think it's, unless I was asleep, I don't think it's been mentioned today that Wilma was the recipient of the first Educator of the Year Award three years ago because of her contributions to education throughout Louisville and this community. So thank you, Wilma. So it wouldn't be possible for these programs to exist without the support of organizations and, and foundations like Snow Al. And with Nana's brain trust to begin that uh, organization and foundation to support causes throughout our community and our state, Nana is a poet. She is, I just told the mayor, she has so many layers. She's a poet. She's a painter, she's a philanthropist, she's a lifelong resident of Louisville. She holds a BA from Wellesley College and an MA from the University of Virginia. Her involvement with the Louisville Visual Art began in 1968 through her mother Nancy Lampton, who had extensive involvement with Louisville Visual Art and this community in, in the arts. When she began volunteering at the Senior Art Gallery where, when LVA was in the public library, and for many years, she has supported local artists by collecting their work. And recently, she established the Snow Al Foundation to support organizations like LVA. We have been very grateful to, LVA has been grateful to have been a recipient of Snow Al grants, furthering the cause of what you just saw with students and young artists like Destiny. The arts have been interwoven in her charitable interest, including downtown development, and land conservation. She's a Berea College trustee who has served on more than 30 uh, organizations and given of herself and her time. She strives to be an artist at work every day by emphasizing sensitivity and imagination in each task and interaction. And if, if, if you could ever have the opportunity to, the honor to be in her home, it's, it's like a museum and I had the opportunity lately to be there, and I said, when you live in a place like this, where would you go on vacation? I mean, it's just, you just feel your blood pressure go down. But it's an, it's an honor to be part of this uh, ceremony today and to present or to announce you as the Benefactor of the Year Award, Nana. Nothing could be finer than this, to be put in a room with friends everywhere. And, and one friend was just inducted into the Hall of Fame of the Kentucky writers. Sina Nasland is here. She's, she's not visual, but she's uh, one of the best writers in the country. I, <laughs> Perhaps some of you will remember three wonderful women who kept the legacy of children's free art classes going. 
One was my mother, Nancy Lampton, who studied with Leon Kroll in New York with the Hudson River painters. The second was Virginia Minish, who worked beautifully in enamels and painting and, and was a great believer in LVA. The third was Toddy Price, Charlotte Price, sculptor and painter. The three of them decided to make it their mission to carry on with children's free art classes. And I'm sure that now children's fine art classes is the right way to say it. I think Lindy has done a fantastic job. He has made a mission for LVA. And the mission is to have art in the schools, now 48 as I understand it. It's a marvelous thing that there is a focus now. I know that LVA is always going to help artists, but to help them at a young age is very important because it creates imagination and the, the, the figuring of perception so that it can cut through brutality and fear and unjust governance and all kinds of troubles, which I suppose we will always have. Our Snowy Owl Foundation started 10 years ago. It was because I saw snowy owls and what, what the female does, she goes out to hunt lemmings and puts them in a circle for her chicks. And if she's lost while she's hunting, those chicks have food for the future and they have another generation. So today we have Bob Griffith who is our chairman, Mo McKnight, a director, one of four for land, art, education, and human need. And Jean Smith, who's right here, who is the administrator, and Julie Turpak, who helps me feed the owl. <laughs> My strong suggestion today, as I discuss with Grant Johnson, a new friend, is that these foundations work together to enable one specific thing. We, we're too um, dispersed. If we're not Lilly, we don't have a Lilly Foundation, and we need to work together. So I encourage the foundations to come together to enable one thing to happen. And I just... Uh, have had the nicest visit with Ed and Bernadette Hamilton. And I met him at the Junior Art Gallery, second floor of the public library in the mid-60s. And so there, there are several of us who've been believers for a long time. I thank you so much. It means a great deal. Ed Hamilton will present Billy with our final award of the afternoon, but first, Ed Hamilton, as you heard before, started taking LVA's CFAC classes in middle school and has been a champion of the program for, mon for many years, and so is his wife, Bernadette. Ed was born in 1947 in Cincinnati and is a resident, though, and has been of Louisville, Kentucky. Ed is a graduate of the Shawnee High School class of 1965 and a graduate of the Louisville School of Art class of 1969. While attending the University of Louisville and Spalding College in the early 70s, an opportunity came along that changed his life forever. While working on his certification to teach in the public school system, Ed met the late sculptor Barney Bright, who he worked for as an apprentice and built a lasting friendship while he continued his quest of having his own sculpting studio. And active in the Louisville community, he does not slow down. Ed has taught workshops, held myriad lectures, opens his studios for tours, and is often called upon to judge art exhibits, and has created opportunities for other artists to work and hone their crafts and skills in his own studio space. Ed's taught sculpture at Jefferson Community College as a member of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity and a longtime member of St. George's Episcopal Church. He served on various boards and panels for community arts organizations, including, including the Louisville Fund for the Arts. Ed also, as we all know, has sculpted many works that have earned worldwide acclaim. And Ed once earned the nickname Sweet Feet after dancing in a local charity event. True story, Ed Hamilton.
Oh, what a great time to be alive. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm reminded of how growing up in this city has played such an important part, not only in my life, but other artistic people's lives. And I never will forget the time that uh, I ventured over on Market Street and I found this uh, wonderful art gallery called Gallery Hearse. And I said, you know, galleries are where artists put works. And I said, you know, this is what it's all about, to expose the artist, to let that person shine in this space, in this place. And so when I went back to my studio, I told my stable mate, Duffy, William Duffy, and you know, most of you know that name. I said, Duff, we can do this too. Well, alas, we kind of outgrew our space. Too much stuff in there, not enough wall space. You never get enough wall space. So it's great to have been able to have Louisville support the arts, LVA to support the arts. And you know, you can't, help that we, foundations. You know, there's no more Medigis, and we need more Medigis. But with the new foundations coming along, like the Gil Hollands of Portland Avenue, Nana, LVA, we can do this. But you know what? This gentleman was a pioneer when he started his gallery. And I'm pleased to present this award to my friend Billy Hearst, an artist of unbound talent as a painter, the Rauschenberg, the, 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 all the great artists of the 21st and 20th century, a mentor to many artists, an entrepreneur, a humble human being, and an early pioneer with his partner, Tom Schneff, Billy created an early renaissance of arts by opening up Gallery Hearst in what is now known as New Lou. Now, who knew that what you started back in 1991 would turn into a neighborhood full of art galleries and shops? It's now a crown jewel for Louisville. And I don't want to leave out Chuck Swanson Gallery because he was right in the midst of it too back in the day. I saw Chuck. Where's Chuck? He's here someplace. There he is. <laughs> and once again, Gallery Hearst would move into an area of town that needed reviving, Smoketown. More artists of note nationally and internationally have come through both of your galleries. And despite your own health difficulties, you still make time and provide a place for others to become successful. For 29 years, that's what you have done. Provided a place for artists to showcase their works and compete in the broader artistic communities and worldwide. So Billy, you have sealed your legacy in your hometown and I am proud proud not only to know you as a, as, a, as a wonderful person, but proud that as a longtime admirer and a friend, I'm able to present you the LVA Legacy 2020 Award for all your con countless positive contributions to the city of Louisville's visual arts culture. May your brushes always be filled with colors of love and happiness all the days of your life. Congratulations, my friend. We love you.
takes a few minutes for this thing to reach heights. <laughs> well, I'd said this before the politicians uh, when I was being interviewed. I don't think you should get a reward for doing the right thing. And um, I, I, I'm humbled by this, but I was just doing the right thing. Uh, a banker called me up after he turned me down about six weeks later and said, what makes you think you can go around renovating buildings? I went, well, somebody's got to. <laughs> and we had made them into art studio spaces. And, um, and he said, well, we're willing to help now. I said, well, they're almost finished and they're totally rented out. And another bank came in because they believed in what we did. So I want to thank LVA for uh, this opportunity and letting me work with them for the last 37 years, not getting rid of me, you know, for my annex and, you know, whatever uh, irresponsible things that some people have said about me. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, and it was always fun working with LVA because you were doing stuff for children. And that was the great thing because children are the future. And the people who got rid of art in the classrooms, I think are the same people who got rid of civics, which is why the country is in this particular state. <laughs> now, if I can share a little bit of my background so you know why I just, think that I'm doing the right thing. My mother majored in horseback riding and Latin in college. My father quit school in the eighth grade to catch eels in the Long Island Sound to help support his family. I was raised in a resort, Delray Beach, Florida. Started going to the Bahamas in the 19, early 1950s because my dad got a construction job there. And uh, so living in a resort, living in South Florida, warped me completely. I was paid to live on the ocean on five private acres. And when they offered me the job, they said, and we'll give you $100 cash. I went, $100? And they went, okay, 125. <laughs> I had a pool man. They raked the beach every day. They paid all my utilities. And my job was to make sure the circuit breakers worked and to feed the orchids ice once a week. <laughs> so you can see where I came from. And my handicap is I have a degree in clay. You know, uh, so you don't want to be defined by that. Uh, let's see, Karen Cunningham for giving me, I needs to be thanked for providing me with a phenomenal group of interns over the years. And I don't know how I've helped them, except I've told them every single mistake that I ever made. Everything from checking your nose for boogers to make sure your zipper's up. So if you call that mentoring, then that's what I've done. Uh, and I need to thank uh, Ann Schneff for introducing me to her brother on a blind date. And uh, we dated bi-coastally when he was in California and New York for over three years. And then we, I brought him across the state line. It'll be uh, 37 years this coming May. And so none of this could be possible without him. And then all the people in uh, my early years uh, in Butchertown that kept me alive, that fed me and encouraged me, uh, Hugh and Sue Green, who uh, provided me with a, an account at Susan Gittleman's Electric Blueprint. And then Susan uh, gave me studio space and other things and big discounts on art supplies to get me through the lean times. <laughs> and they were real lean sometimes. <laughs> so anyhow, again, thank you so much. Uh, I don't really deserve this because I just did what all of you have been doing, helping children. And that's what we need to do and continue to do. So thank you.
Thank you, Billy, and I think everybody would agree, you do deserve this. Art matters, and so do LVA's children's classes. We need your support. Thank you for taking the time to attend today. Have a great rest of your day.